Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. Hey, you big honky. <laughs> say what? Can I say that? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we when we grew up, there were shows on TV, like All in the Family. God. And the Jeffersons and Good Times. And all of these shows had one thing in common, and it was racism. Politically incorrectness. Today, we have an article we're going to share, and we're going to give you our thoughts on political correctness on the next Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvair Ronnie. Nice to be with you again today, Ronnie. Appreciate it. Ditto that. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, today we're talking about political correctness and the fact that it is out of control. Out of control completely. Yep. And you know what? I'm sick of it. I'm done. Sick and tired of it. I'm not supposed to say Merry Christmas because I might offend someone. Frankly, I don't care. Yep. Um, <clears throat> if you want to wish me Happy Hanukkah, I'm going to say thank you very much. That's yeah, very kind of you. That's fine. Makes no never mind to me. No. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Untrue. Mm. Names can hurt. Names can shame, ridicule, and humiliate. Some pertain to race or gender. Others refer to weight, facial features, or a particular part of one's anatomy. Names that refer to social class or what part of the country you're from can be hurtful, as can names that involve age, religion, or physical ability. Even slang names for certain occupations can be hurtful. Certainly, and I think we can all agree, no one likes to be called a name that is disrespectful, unkind, or downright mean. And that'll get you banned from our channel. Yeah, damn straight. Yep. But... There is another category of name calling that is also hurtful and destructive. Names such as racist, sexist, homophobe, antisemite, bigot, and the like. Yet many throw these labels around at the drop of a hat without understanding what the labels actually mean. Not to mention the damage done by accusing someone of racism, sexism, etc. Uh, the accusation alone, even without merit can be enough to besmirch a reputation, kill a career, and or be used to invalidate a lifetime of good work. Let's consider the definition of racism. A belief that race is the primary determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial difference produce an inherently superiority of a particular race. How about the definition of sexism? Prejudice or discrimination based on sex, especially discrimination against women, which that statement discriminates against men. Um, let's see. Who is obstinately or intolerantly devoted to his or her own opinions and prejudices, especially one who regards or treats the members of a group, as in a racial or ethnic group, with hatred or and intolerance. So I wonder, do the TV talking heads understand the true definition of the labels they hurl at public figures, racist, sexist, sexist, bigoted, or worse, based on nothing more than a comment taken out of context, someone's clumsy attempt at humor, which happens quite a bit, or a photo or image that the artistic expression of a creative person. So how many of us understand these definitions when we call someone a racist or sexist? Jerk. Jerk, perhaps, but racist or sexist? Perhaps, perhaps not. Do we really understand the seriousness of those labels or are we simply indulging in destructive name calling based on political correctness? So the point is that political correctness movement has gone way too far. Understatement. I think that in the days of All in the Family, the pendulum was over here. Mm -hmm. It has swung to the opposite side as far as it can go. The umbrella that I put over all of that is sensitivity. And they even call it sensitivity training nowadays. Right. You know what I found, Ronnie? We'll get back to this. At my age, at our age, 
and I think this happens with the, the decadial uh, generations before us, uh, we grow up in a particular era, uh, era where things are this way. And um, what I'm getting at is we grew up with that, and so we know that now, and the things that we would say that were okay when we were growing up, even though we still know them because we grew up with them, we can't say that anymore. Right. Uh, and I'll give you, a, for instance, where I work, I work with um, three, or, three women, I think it is, three or four maybe sometimes. And, um, you know, I, I love each and every one of them. Well, the fact that you don't even actually know how many right. women you work with speaks for itself that you look at them as co-workers, co-workers exactly. not men or women. Uh, exactly. It makes no difference to me. But see, um, I, I consider them so close to me that sometimes I'll use the word dear. Right. Uh, and I ain't talking about an animal. Which, by the way, on when I was pulling up to your house today, I saw a mama and her baby deer out in that oh, field over there. Yeah, pretty cool. Definitely. Anyway, so I'll say, you know, uh, I'll get that deer. Let me take care of that. And some might think of that as being, I guess, sexist. And I suppose it's bordering on that. But I, to me, nothing could be more of a term of endearment. Right. And I mean no harm in any way, shape, or form. And I wouldn't even mean my mind being called dear one or something to that effect. It's just a nice term. But we're so freaking sensitive now that, well, somebody from across the room could have heard that and been offended. Right. Are you kidding me? Third, third party offended. Yeah. I, like secondhand smoke. I, I was working on Tuesday this last week for the Sheriff's Department in full uniform, and I'm working at a security post where you have to be cleared to get in. And a fairly high-ranking woman with Bureau of Reclamation came in. She was on our list. She was approved to come in. I gave her a visitor pass, and as she drove past the checkpoint, she said, thanks, honey. But she said it with a bit of a southern accent mm -hmm. which is and it made it better i you know what it's completely that's just what they do in if you spend any time in tennessee or arkansas or they do they say darling and honey and dear and it's not offensive and i didn't find it offensive however in the sheriff's department every year we have to take it's about an hour class uh -huh. on sensitivity training uh -huh. And there are things you can and cannot say. And if you say one, uh, you can be pretty sure you're going to wind up in the human resources office. Okay, Ronnie, the train's about to go off the track. Are you ready? Yes. Here's something that I have an issue with, and this is going to be con controversial. So get ready. Question. Why is it okay for an African-American to call another African-American the N-word. But as a white person, if I use that term, which I don't, it is not even in my vocabulary. I hate that word. It's so derogatory. And, and started out that way. Yeah. And never had a good intention. But why, if someone else other than me, white uses that word, forget it. It's the end of their life. What isn't that a double standard, and isn't that what this is all about? So, in my sensitivity training, they call that in-class privilege. So... I see. So, if you are in that class, you, you can use that term. It would be the same thing as if you were uh, homosexual, and you used the F word uh, against someone... It's an in-class privilege. They are, they're allowed to say it. If you are outside of the class, you're not allowed to use any of those derogatory terms. And in, and in fact, both of those are so vile to me. Um, I don't honestly think there's a, there's not even a, a word to describe white people 
that can be used in the same tone. It it is just man that word cracker means nothing to me. Nothing I, to me either. I could care less. I like crackers. <laughs> yeah. I like to put butter on. I, I like Cracker Barrel. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Cracker Barrel. But we digress. <laughs> so it really is. It's just one of those. Th that word, the the N word to me is, man, that just seems like that's going to start a fight. Yeah. That's all that's good for. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, in that sense, and it's impossible to just draw a line in the sand, but it, it, your definition really helps to inform me uh, of something I was unaware of. Yep. Uh, and I hope you too uh, picked up on that. Um, y you know, uh, but still, we have to evaluate carefully every word that comes out of our mouth nowadays, like a big, huge filter to make sure that everything we say is going to be taken correctly. And I believe the problem is the generations that have come after us have been raised to be big sissies. Get over yourself. There's a great song by the Eagles. <laughs> Get over it. It's called Get Over It. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I recommend, if you haven't already done that, after you finish watching this show. Just look at the lyrics. Not now. Take a look, okay? Yeah. That's where I stand on this. Yep. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't cater to every single 8 billion people on this planet uh, with every single word that I say. Right. And you know what? Maybe that's my upbringing. Uh, not that I'm a racist, but I grew up in an era, as I said, where I'm Polish. I was called Polak. I was called Meathead. There were Polish jokes. How many Polacks does it take to screw in a light bulb? Uh, there's light bulbs. Um, <laughs> I, I like to give you the, the bowling jokes. Oh, those are the best, yeah. <laughs> I always tell people, I'm Polish. I have to bowl. It's a law. <laughs> so, you know what? I, I can take it, Yeah. but I can't give it out. Right. Not allowed to. Not supposed to. Again, my grandson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the explanation, Grandpa. Well, and this this thing goes on to say, if we must constantly self-censor any con con conversation pertaining to race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, or physical ability, then we are doomed to perpetuate the very barriers we say we want to overcome. I think that really says it all. I think it does. I mean, if you have to have so many filters in place, uh, it's only going to get worse. It'll never get better. The other day at work, and we have several Spanish-speaking people, bilingual, I should say, people on our staff, and we were in a conversation, and we were talking about uh, the English language versus the Spanish language, and, and I made this comment that Spanish-speaking people always have to double the amount of syllables in the words they use. <laughs> Is that derogatory? <laughs> Probably not the place at work. But still, it was germane to the conversation. Cockroach. La cucaracha. That's what I'm saying. That's a perfect example right there. You know, if, if, um, if English word is one syllable... The Spanish word is going to be two or three. At least. Yeah. yeah. Never fails. So is, is that racist? Where is that line? Somebody right. please help me because... It's a little blurred at I'm that end. I'm tired of walking on the <clears throat> eggshells. Yeah. I've about had it. And I know you feel that way too. And Ronnie does too. Oh, boy. Uh, now, I'm not saying can we just go back to the times of all in the family. No, that's not necessary. But, and that was over the top. It really was. And it was done purposely Intentionally for that yeah. to show that. By Norman Lear. Yeah. That's a name that if you're a younger person, you may not know. But um, he paved the way for the television that we watch t t today. Absolutely. No doubt about it. All right. So there you go. Uh, there's our stand on being politically correct. Uh, it's, it's out of control. What do we do about it? Do you have an answer? We'd like to hear from you on our comment section. Yeah. Uh, we love when you comment on our videos. And 
Uh, not only do we say it, but we prove it every week. We reply to your comments. Ask anybody that's a regular viewer of this program yep. who has sent us a comment whether they received a comment back, a reply. And I guarantee you, 100% to a person will say yes. You know what? There's an occasional comment that I absolutely don't understand. And I may give it a thumbs up, but I can't reply to it. Right. I'm just not sure what they were trying to say. Give us credit for the for the thumbs up. I mean, you know, at least you know that we read it. Right. Oh, and, and if it's helpful to you as a regular viewer, when I'm commenting, it comes across as Gallagher Entertainment just because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the administrator for the page. But it's me. I try to put Lou or Lou Gallagher or whatever so you know. All right. Uh, Ronnie is Corvette Ronnie, and yep. that's, that's perfect for him. Uh, but just so you know. We value your comments. They're important. The insight that you have, not to mention how freaking creative our viewers are, Ronnie. They are pretty amazing. Some of the emails that we get, I just go, viewer of the week. Very clever. That some, is the comment of the week. Some very clever people yeah. out there. Uh, so send us your comments. We'd love to hear you weigh in on this, and uh, we'll keep you posted. Maybe we'll do a follow-up show. Depends on the comments. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you for watching today. Uh, it's been fun and interesting, thought-provoking, and that's the kind of content we hope to bring you on each and every show in a very entertaining way. Well, thank you, Cracker. Thank you very much, Honky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corbett Ryan. And we're going to chuckle our way out of here. <laughs> See you.